Today we're going to talk about the isoelectric point. The isoelectric point is a property of amino acids that determines uh, the type of ionization that happens to the carboxylic group and the amino group and it means that this is the point where the amino uh, acid is considered neutral, electrically neutral compared to the surrounding medium. So we'll begin with the basic structure of the amino acid which looks something like that. So this is our amino group and this is the carboxylic uh, group. The carboxylic group is more acidic so it tends to lose this hydrogen and it gains a negative charge and the amino group is more basic so it accepts a proton and instead of being and NH2 it becomes NH3 and gains a positive charge and the pH of the surrounding medium will determine this type of ionization now we have to learn uh, three um, terms we have pH and we have pKa and we have pI pI is the isoelectric point the pH is a scale from 0 to 14 and on the midpoint we have 7. 7 is considered neutral like water. So water is a neutral substance. If we go towards the 0, the substance becomes more acidic. If we go towards the 14, the substance becomes more basic or alkaline. This is the pH scale. The pKa scale is also like the pH scale but is specific for acids and it works also the same way. The lower the number the higher the acidity. The higher the number the lower the acidity is. And the pI as we said is the isoelectric point. So from this the pKa is more related to the groups itself, not the whole um, structure. So the carboxylic group has a pKa of around 3, so it's acidic. And the amino group, on the contrary, has a pKa around 10 or 9, so a larger number. So it tends more to be basic. So these are the main uh, points that we uh, need to know. We have dicarboxylic amino acids and we have diamino amino acids. So we'll begin with the dicarboxylic ones. So let's say we have something like that. NH2 and then we have a CH2 and another carboxylic group. In this case, uh, the acidity of the medium for the for the previous amino acid, we will calculate the pI as follows. We don't have an extra carboxylic group, so we say that the pI equals the pKa of the uh, alpha carbon uh, carboxylic group plus the pKa of the alpha carbon amino group. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is around 3 and this is around 9 or 10. So it will give us something that's around 6. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So the uh, pI of such simple amino acids is around 6. Now let's look at this amino acid that we have here. We have two carboxylic groups. In this case, we do not really uh, consider the amino acid to affect the pI of this amino acid. So in calculation, we say that pK or pI equals the pKa of the alpha carbon carboxylic group, which is the first one. And we have another carboxylic group, and we name the carbon that's it attached to it beta carbon. So the pKa of the beta carbon carboxylic group 
all divided by 2. All divided by 2. So 3 plus 3 divided by 2 will give us something around 3. So this is the pi of dicarboxylic amino acids. Now, what happens throughout the change of the PI, the medium surrounding the amino acid? It goes like this. We begin with a pH lower than the PI. And at that point, as we mentioned, the medium is more acidic than the amino acid itself. So this will donate a proton to the amino group because it's, it has to be more basic and the amino acid will be written like this. Then the pH becomes equal to the pi and again the proton will be uh, lost and the equilibrium will happen and the amino acid will uh, look like that if the pH of the medium equals the pi of the amino acid. And then we go to the case where the pH is higher than the pi, and this means that the medium is more basic. This will intrigue one uh, carboxylic group to lose its proton and donate it to the medium. The next case, so in the previous time, we had three steps, pH less equal more than. Then here we have far more than the pi because we still have another carboxylic group that still has the H attached. If we want to uh, the carboxylic group to lose this H, we need to raise the pH of the surrounding medium far more higher than the pi of the amino group or the amino acid. So in this case, the two carboxylic groups will lose their H's. On the contrary, for the other type of amino acids, the diamino um, amino acids, we have a structure like this, CH2, this is lysine. So we start with a pH which is far less than the pi. Why? Because the amino acid expresses more basic character because we have two amino groups. So at that point, the two amino acids will have extra protons because the uh, acidity of the medium is far higher than the, uh, the pi, the isoelectric point of this amino acid. If we say just less than the pi, then one of the groups, the amino groups, will lose this attached hydrogen, and then the pH becomes equal to the pi, and the other amino group will lose the attached proton, And then the pH will be higher than the pi and the medium will be more basic than the basicity of the amino acid. And then the carboxylic group will donate the hydrogen to express the acidic character. And the pi of this type of amino acid equals, again, when we have two groups of the same type, we do not uh, consider the other type of, of groups, like the carboxylic group, as an effector in the uh, determination of the, of the value of the pi. So the pi equals the pKa of the alpha carbon amino group plus the pKa of the beta carbon amino group, which is the second carbon, this one here divided by 2, which gives us a number around 10. From this, we conclude the numbers or the, uh, the values of the pi for amino acids. For lysine and arginine, which lie under the same category of being diamino monocarboxylic amino acids, 
the PI is around 10. 4. Histidine, this is a specific case, the PI equals around 7.58. For aspartic acid and glutamic acid, the pH or the PI equals around 3 and for the rest of amino acids the PI equals around 6. So this sums it up for the isoelectric point. I hope the concept was clear for you and this is it for today. Until the next time, I thank you for watching and see you.